All right, all right. We're live. Get ready to get it going. My children of the sun, welcome to the open eye on WHGE 95.3 FM, the education advocacy station. I'm your third eye optometrist and host, Patrice Gibbs. That's right, right here on WHGE. We are getting ready to get it started. I'm not going to waste your time. Uh, good morning, Sherry, my favorite Facebook cuz, and a very good friend, off of Facebook. That's right. She's not just Facebook, baby. That's where it look. I'm not sure where I got this, but I like it. I feel it. Some of us were raised as the wild ones, the room wreckers and reality checkers, the fire tongued and fierce leaders, the wild hearted and world changers. These, 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 these kids can argue like a prosecutor. My father used to say that. Boy, you better be a lawyer. And sometimes you, you know, your parents would just wish you said, yes, mom, yes, dad, and move on. But one day, those wound wreckers and reality checkers, they will, they, they will use those skills to stand up for themselves, for the people they love. And for perfect strangers because injustice doesn't live in their world. I don't want to sound boastful. I'm not an egotist. You heard what my opening says. If you're here for ego diddling, you're in the wrong place. Oh, still rolling. Okay. Well, a uh, little sad news here. Well, not a little sad news. Those of you that, that have not heard of him, please, please do some research on this brother because he was a pioneer. Melvin Van Peebles, considered the godfather of black cinema, died at 89 on September 22nd, a few days ago. Melvin Van Peebles, the pioneering filmmaker behind the 1970 films, Watermelon Man, if you haven't seen him, Try to find them. They are streaming. Uh, there's a, uh, a website that streams historic black movies. And I'm sure this is on it. Look it up. Van Peebles, the father of actor-director Mario Van Peebles, died Tuesday night at his home in Manhattan. His family, uh, the Criterion Collection, and Janet Sims announced his death in a statement. And an unparalleled career distinguished by relentless innovation, boundless curiosity, and spiritual empathy, Melvin Van Peebles made an indelible mark on the international cultural landscape through his films, novels, plays, and music. His work continues to be essential and is still celebrated at the New York Film Festival and will be celebrated at the New York Film Festival this weekend with a 50th anniversary screening of his landmark film, Sweet Sweet Back's uh, Badass Song. A Criterion Collection box set, Melvin Van Peebles' essential films next week and a revival of his play, and Supposed to Die a Natural Death, slated for a return to Broadway next year. 
as I said, considered by many to be the godfather of modern black cinema, Van Peebles, Van Peebles was an influential link to a younger generation of African-American filmmakers that includes Spike Lee and John Singleton. The Chicago native also was a novelist, theater empresario, songwriter, musician, and painter. Van Peebles was living in Paris when the first feature he wrote and directed, The Story of a Three-Day Pass, attracted attention and put him on the radar at Columbia Pictures. The studio, the studio selected him to direct Watermelon Man a racial satire that starred Godfrey Cambridge as Jeffrey Gerber, a bigoted white insurance salesman who goes to the bathroom in a suburban home in the middle of the night and discovers he's black. Very few African-Americans were directing in Hollywood at that time. On the strength of that movie's success, Columbia offered Van Peebles a three-picture deal but wanted no part of his next project. Sweet, sweet, that's badass song. Helped by a $50,000 loan from Bill Cosby, he wrote, directed, produced, scored, and edited the renegade film while starring as his anti-hero, a ladies' man with a superhero love-making abilities who battles the corrupt white establishment in Los Angeles. A lot of things came out of that movie, Sweet, uh, sweet Bat's Badass Song. Well, for one thing, the soundtrack the soundtrack was performed by Earth, Wind, and Fire. All right, sweet, sweet, sweet. Uh, what? Excuse me. Van Peebles made Sweet back in 19 days for a reported five hundred thousand dollars. It opened in only two venues in Atlanta and Detroit, for few by strong word of mouth from working class African Americans. In a soundtrack, as I said, performed by Earth, Wind, and Fire. The picture ranked in more than $10 million, making it the highest grossing independent film in history at the time. The opening credits note that the star of the film is the black community. Mario Van Peebles. I mean, uh, Melvin Van Peebles. Godfather of black cinema. And you know, Van Peebles, he actually was instrumental in saving Hollywood. Because at the time, the early 70s, Hollywood wasn't doing too well. Columbia Pictures wasn't doing great. You know, and what was discovered through Van Peebles' film was that there was an in, indeed a black market for cinema. This is where we got the so-called, and I hate use the expression because they tag it on way too many black films. Way too many black films. That the term black black exploitation. You know, and don't get it mixed. Because a lot of films that came out during the 70s, during the quote unquote black exploitation uh period, included films like Lady Sings the Blues, for which Diana Ross was uh, nominated for an Oscar for her portrayal of uh, Billy Holiday. There was films like, uh, uh, oh, 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 Bingo Long and the Traveling All-Stars and Motor Kings, one of my favorite movies. One of my favorite movies it was about the Negro Baseball League. It starred uh, Billy D. Williams and, oh my God, I can't think of his name. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, James Earl Jones and the characters played by James Earl Jones and Billy Dee Williams uh, could be matched to Satchel Paige and Josh Gibson it was a really great movie and there were a whole lot of really really great movies that came out during the black exploitation era I would advise you to take a look at that era and see what was uh, what our people were doing the uh, Artistic heights they had reached and what have you. And uh, good morning, boy. All right, all right. Dover and I is brought to you by Delaware Center for our Homeless Vets, the founders and builders of the Pearl Center, the veteran specific apartment building. Delaware Center for Homeless Vets, changing veterans' lives all over Delaware.
views and opinions expressed on Open Eye are those of the hosts, guests, and contributors, and do not reflect the policy or position of WHDE 95.3 FM, nor our sponsor, the Delaware Center for Homeless Vets. Any content provided by Open Eye's hosts, guests, or contributors are theirs, and are not intended to align any religion, ethnic group, company, or individual. WHGE 95.3 FM. Yeah, buddy. I'm Patrice Gibbs, your third eye optometrist and host. We will soon be joined by my partner in consciousness, No Saroma. All right, let's get it. Let's get it. Let's keep it moving here. You know, this is something I mentioned to a friend of mine. It's expensive to be poor. That sounds crazy, huh? I had this quote from Anna Corbin. She said, I just told someone that some poor people, some people are so poor, they can't afford to get jobs. The person she told that man, but she wasn't kidding. Gas money, childcare expenses, and lack of clothing to meet dress code requirements are often barriers to employment for low-income individuals. Now you know. It's expensive to be poor. You pay more for goods and services. Very often, most likely, you don't handle your finances through the bank, but the pawn shop. Can't afford a bank account, a checking account. You know, and this is your financial services at the pawn shop, or you get your check cashed at the liquor store. And like I said, you pay more for goods and services. It's, it's expensive to be poor. Oftentimes, poor people live in, in what we call food deserts, where they don't have a supermarket close by. This affects your health. Because what happens is when you're living in a food desert, guess where you shop? At the dollar store. And all you're eating and feeding your children is processed foods, which leads to bad health, which leads to missing time from work, missing time from school. It's expensive but be poor. It's not a joke. You know, I had someone criticize me as I often do don't care what their situation is most of the time I see people on the street and you know I know what they're involved in and they ask you for a dollar you know most times I give you know unless somebody comes to me with you know too long of a story I had one cat tell me about how he had just got out of jail that morning and I saw him the next day and he told me say I just got out of jail this morning you know, but oftentimes, like I said, I will give because I know what it's like to have nothing. And yeah, I know they might be an alcoholic or a drug addict, but that's an hour they don't have to chase the dragon. Yeah, that's what it is. So, all right, moving right along. You want to know what systemic racism is about? Just look at the court system. We had a similar situation here. All right. This happened in St. Ducci County and Fort Pierce, Florida. The same crime, same courtroom, same judge, same criminal history. Third. 1,300% difference in sentencing. 1,300% difference in sentencing. Chase Legal, what's his name? Chase Lee, oh, I can't pronounce his cast name. Le oh boy, Legalner, Legatner, whatever his name. Chase Legatner. Charged with armed robbery at 19. No contest plea. One misdemeanor prior. 
His total court points, 138.2. In two years in county. Then there was Lamar Louis. Same crime now. Same courtroom, same judge. Same criminal history. Lamar Louis, armed robbery at 21. No contest plea. One misdemeanor. One prior misdemeanor. Total points. 138.2. Same judge now. Getting 26 years. 26 years. Effectively ending his life. You go to jail at 21 years old and get 26 years. You're going to be 47 when you get out. The world is going to be a very different place. Same judge. I want y'all to know who this judge is. Judge Sherwood Bauer, Jr. St. Lucie County Courthouse in Fort Pierce, Florida. Go on my Facebook page and get his office address, phone number, fax number. His judicial assistant is Wendy Detroitler. Same judge. We had a case like that here. The judge was put on judicial suspension. That's not enough. That is not enough. Hey, Bessie, I see you, sister. All right, sweetness. Good morning. All right. And one white woman. This is a quote from Bishop, Bishop Talbert Swan. Addresses the same thing. He said, if one white woman accused him of rape, his career would be over. You have a white man accused of assault by 22 women. And he's able to run for a second term as president with half the country still supporting him. This is all you need to know about racism, white male patriarchy, and white supremacy. Of course, there's a lot more to know about it, but you get the point. You get the point. Yeah, people have the audacity to say, well, you know, all you're doing, and I mean white, white conservatives and white people in general, white society, and you keep talking about race, all you're doing is opening a festering wound. <laughs> <laughs> Cause that's that's just that's just ridiculous. It's a wound. Racism, white supremacy is a wound that has never even been addressed. Not in any significant way. Like Malcolm said, you stick a six-inch knife in my back, and then pull it out three inches. You can't call that progress. If you take the knife all the way out and leave the wound festering, still not progress. Until the wound is properly addressed, you're just not progressing. You know, until the wound is actually addressed, the healing. Which considering the way our leaders behave, our so-called leaders, including Jim Crow, Joe, and Kamala. I'm not doing anything for the black community now, Harris. Just the recent events this week, which I'm going to get to, points out how we the leadership is. That's right. And oh, oh, don't get it mixed. I'm talking especially about you, Congressional Black Caucus, the CDC, the crazy Black Caucus, because they don't do a damn thing for us on issues that are smacking us in the face. The Congressional Black Caucus is so quiet, <laughs> you know, 
in their offices, when it, you bring up something about what's going on in the black community, you can hear a rat pissing on a cotton ball. I'm Patrice Gibbs. This is The Open Eye. WHGE 95.3 FM, The Open Eye. I'm your host, Third Eye Optometrist, Patrice Giz. I just got a call from my partner in consciousness. He's not going to be able to make it today, but don't you worry. Don't you worry. Your Third Eye Optometrist is here. Yes, indeed. I know how to fly solo. Don't you worry about it. Uh, let me see here. Got a response from Bessie. And she said she was talking about how Delaware County is about a black man messing with their white women. They make sure the Jews get what they need, but not blacks. She also stated, the NAACP is not the same. They have stayed quiet. The NAACP, yep, yep, that's word. I'm gonna tell y'all in a minute what they stayed quiet about. Not hearing enough about that. That's word. Stephen Leach liked what I had to say. What's up, Steve? He liked what I had to say, a uh, rat pissing on a cotton ball. You got to remember that one. You damn right. You damn right. All right, all right. Let's get moving right along. Okay. Uh, yeah, this was from, um, from uh, my Facebook cousin and good friend, Sherry. The Big Secret. I forgot what book that came from, Sherry, but that's all right. What a Negro is not supposed to know. And listen up, y'all. Understand this. Starting with the Spanish Inquisition in 1478, the white European Franciscan Brotherhood of the Catholic Church designed a plan to expel all Africans or black Moors and Muslims out of Spain. Yeah, 1478. Okay. Um... You have to remember in 711, the Moors conquered Spain and much of Southern Europe. And as the saying goes, Europe should always cry, thank heaven for 711. Because the Moors of North Africa, which included, which was of course dominated by the Blacks of Northern Africa, but included Arabs and Berbers. They went into Europe in 711 and basically re educated Europe. This is the second time that the African re educated Europe. First time was with the Greeks and Romans. The second time, 711, when they conquered uh, southern Europe, their main base being Spain. Right. Now, the Catholic Church, led by the Franciscan Brotherhood, worked to get the Moors out of Europe, especially out of Spain. Included in their plan was to work to gain world power and destroy the existence of black people's domination of the world. Yes. Black people dominated the world at that time. They wanted to destroy black people's achievements and destroy or cover up all the ancient records, books, monuments, statues, and things that prove that black people were the originators of all great ancient civilizations throughout the four corners of the earth. Okay? 
-hmm. Europeans have only been running the world for about 500 years. And they've made a mess of it. I mean, they have made a mess of it. Because they lack balance. Because they are warlike people. You know, before they came into contact with the African, before they were in a position to conquer the African, they warred amongst themselves. And the casualties were untold numbers. This was amongst themselves. They enslaved each other. They burnt their women at the stake. If a woman in Europe, if a white woman in Europe was intelligent, they said it was witchcraft and they burnt her at the stake. Now, if you think these people went anywhere, they didn't. Now, be damned if America is in a prime example. Brother Judea, sure he'll catch the show. But he said, this, this is something that bothers him, what I'm about to tell you. If you are unwilling to question your beliefs, you will never know if you are following truth or lies. Your immoral oppressors gave you your religion, your Bible, your history, and education. They also control all your statistics, national narratives, and media images. Only a damn fool would, would, would not question their beliefs constructed under these circumstances. And Brother Jadea, and, and, and he's right, it should bother him that so many of our people will not wake up with the evidence right there. You're walking around with cell phones. These are handheld Computers, I mean, all the information in the world is in Google. All you got to do is look it up. But the indoctrination runs deep. My mother taught me that people are too lazy or afraid to learn anything beyond what they've been told. But you got to consider, we are talking about people who were taught from a child by people who were taught from a child for generations. For gener that is a very difficult mental chain to break. That's why we don't indulge in mental masturbation here. Because the chains of oppression are deep and difficult to remove. You got to understand the people's core values and understanding of the world, who they are in the world, is all wrapped up in that indoctrination. Accepting that all you've been taught and have embraced is not true is frightening. That's scary. You've been taught, if you don't believe these things, you're going to burn in hell. That's not easy to back off, back off of. Unfortunate but true. Unfortunate but true. It's not easy. Hmm? You know, last week I talked about the effect of music. And I want to go over that again, as I didn't get uh, as deep into it as I could. I talked about Louis Armstrong, who recorded the first black protest song, 1928. And this was during the time where, you know, the, the early part of his career, 1928 America, where... You know, a, a favorite pastime of Southern and Midwestern whites. Oh, my goodness. Somebody's sending me stuff on my phone. Okay. There's a quote from Dr. Umar. 
And I think he was right on point here. Music can be a very revolutionary force. It always has been. When you look at any revolutionary movement, there was a music to go with it. Just like music can wake you up, it can also... Oh, man. Come on, sister. When you come into a community, if you don't know the mental state of the people, all you have to do is listen to the popular tunes they play. You know, some young people are all, bro, man, you don't like the music because you're just old. No, yeah, I'm old, but your music's trash. Let me tell you something. From Louis Armstrong's Black and Blue in the late 1920s to Billy Holiday's Strange Fruit in the 30s, Nina Simone's Mississippi Goddamn in the 60s, James Brown, Say It Loud, I'm Black and I'm Proud in the late 60s. Marvin Gaye's What's Going On and Stevie Wonder's Living in the City in the 70s. Music has always had its consciousness. Including the early days of hip-hop. From Run DMC's It's Like That. Through the apex of conscious rap as produced by Public Enemy. Then came, then came NWA and Gangster Rap. What most critics miss is that for the most part, gangster rap maintained a level of consciousness. Then, corporate America got involved and rappers could no longer get airplay with music that informed and uplifted. Now the music that gets airplay is about materialism, machismo, misogyny, and ignorance. Gangster rap became thug rap. Uh, this is neither a coincidence nor a happenstance. This is a planned, purposeful process with an intended outcome. It is no secret that young fans tend to emulate their favorite artists and that these artists have the power of influence. I take no umbrage with what I'm about to say. And I don't give a damn who don't like it. But piss on Lil Wayne, Rick Ross, Nicki Minaj, Kanye West, mm -hmm, Jay-Z and the slutty acting wife Beyonce. None of these people give a damn about anything but fame and money. Not one of them give a damn about the advancement of our community or people. Why is Thug Rap so popular? Because that's what's pushed, made available, and sex and violence sell. This is the open eye on Patrice Gibbs. Thank you, Brother Vaughn. I hope I did, man. Yes, indeed. WHGE 95.3 FM 
This is Patrice Gibbs, your third high optometrist. I know you out there listening, no Saroma. Big ups, brother. All right, all right. The poorest country in the Western uh, Hemisphere, by all accounts, is Haiti. Like I said, like I say about a lot of things, that is not by happenstance. This is planned. This is enforced. Why? For those of you that don't know the history of Haiti, remember Haiti is the only country during the Atlantic slave trade era taken over by the enslaved people and ran the enslaver out. Haiti defeated the French Empire, which was under Napoleon at the time, and took their freedom. I'm not going to say they gained their freedom. They won. They took their goddamn freedom. Y'all understand that? And they've been punished for it ever since. In 1804, where are my notes? Oh, yeah. In 1804, Toussaint Louverture and Dessalines led Haiti from, well, it was from 1891, uh, I mean, 1791 to 1804 was how long the war was. But they ran the French out of there and got their freedom. Now, in, I think, 1811, the French surrounded Haiti with warships and threatened the Haitians that if they did not pay their former slave masters reparations for losing their commodity, being, being the human lives and bondage and lay free labor that were the African people living on the island of Haiti, That they would war on them again and re enslave them. So Haiti, under the threat of violence, was forced to pay France reparations from 1811 to 1947. And you wonder why Haiti is poor? Are you kidding me? France has been eating at the table of black people for way too long. I held my tongue there. But they have for way too long. And it wasn't just the French that the Haitians ran out, but the British and the Americans. Now, what the Americans did was they masked democracy and invaded Haiti in 1915, occupied Haiti. Yeah, America, land of the free, home of the brave, land of the snakes, home of the slaves, on the reality. Yeah. You know, Haiti in the, in the late 1800s, Haiti, like so many other lands in, inhabited by black people, was under constant threat from Western world invasion. France, Germany, and the U.S. all wanted a footprint on the island. Haiti is not poor. Haiti is not underdeveloped. Haiti is not developed. Because like these these Western countries I named, they wanted to secure a, a military and economic stronghold in the West Indies, and they picked Haiti to do it. And like I said, Haiti has resources. Diamonds, they found some oil. Oh, Lord, they found some oil. America better bring them some, some of that hot goddamn uh, uh, democracy. 
Yo, in 1868, President Andrew Johnson suggested the annexation of Haiti and the Dominican Republic to secure a U.S. defensive and economic state stake in the West Indies. That was 1868. In 1910, President William Howard Taft gave Haiti a loan that paid off its international debt. The attempt failed because of instability in government and the country's debt was way too large. See, watch, watch when these when these Western powers want to loan you some money because they loan sharks, baby. And they good at it. And when you don't pay the money, they demand your resources. Uh, do you hear me, Mother Africa? Do you hear what I'm saying? Have you caught on to this game yet? Because now the Chinese are coming in your land playing the same colonizer game as the Europeans. Wake up, y'all. Damn it. In 1914, Woodrow Wilson sent U.S. Marines into Haiti to remove $500,000 from the Haitian National Bank to the Bank of New York. That's just straight up robbery. They went and robbed the Haitian bank and took their money to a bank in New York. This gave the United States government control of their bank. The Wilson administration says after they stole their money that this was to protect U.S. assets in the area and prevent a possible German invasion. Yeah. Just unbelievable. Haitian President Jean Vibron Guillonsan was assassinated in 1915. Haiti had to sign a treaty with the Americans to end the invasion. The treaty gave the U.S. complete control over Haitian finances and the right to intervene in Haiti whenever the U.S. government deemed necessary. The U.S. would slowly take over Haitian institutions. President Wilson would also try to rewrite the Constitution of Haiti, but ultimately that, he failed at that. The agreement also created the Haitian Gendarmerie, uh, 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 mm, the Haitian Gendarmerie a military force made up of U.S. citizens and Haitians, but controlled by the U.S. government. And of course, these forces were very unpopular with the Haitian people. They included racial segregation, press censorship, as well as forced labor. Can you spell colonizing slavery? And this went on for decades. You heard of Papa Doc, the puppet dictator who was bent on destroying his own people in Haiti. So Haiti became a very rough place to be. Then there were earthquakes and recently hurricanes. And President Biden said, oh, those of you that fled Haiti, uh, into other southern, come on over here. But when they got there, who were they met with? Let me let me let me let me start right here. I dare you to hit a dog with a whip on camera and keep your goddamn job. I dare you to do that. What photos came out this week? The Haitians that were in South America, Mexico, and other places crossed over into Texas and were met by Border Patrol agents on horseback with whips. What the hell is this, 1870? Are you kidding me? On horseback with whips. The attitude in this country? Ho, ho, ho. Let me tell you about the attitude in this country. Hmm. What I say, I dare you to hit a dog with a whip. Oh, you got to see the photos. 
of these race soldiers, the Border Patrol, chasing down Haitians and beating them with whips. We at Jim Crow Joe. It took the Biden administration days to condemn this. But they didn't actually do anything about it. Oh, remember a month ago, America uh, pulled out of Afghanistan? And what happened? They welcomed the Afghanistanis in. What has been going on with immigration for, for, for years now? Latin America has been coming in and you don't call them illegal, uh, illegal immigrants. How dare you? They're dreamers. They're undocumented immigrants. What's to say on the Statue of Liberty? Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to be free. The ref refuge of your teeming shore. Send these the homeless, tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, unless they're black. Yeah. Where are all these people talking about the dreamers at now? Where you at, uh, Congressional Black Caucus, NAACP? Where y'all at? Why the people of Haiti are being chased down and beaten with horse whips? Are you kidding me? Jeez. Yeah, like I said, I, I bear, oh, AOC, and uh, what they call the squad in, in, in Congress. The our Haitian family being whipped is no different from George Floyd being choked of his air supply and, mur and murder. Those men on horses had the same goddamn mindset of police officers who kill black people every day. Know that. Don't get this mixed. Where is it? These border patrols, just like the race soldiers, which I call the police, are the same damn people, descendants of the slave patrol. The tactics that were employed by the slave patrol have led to the police tactics of today. For instance, they monitored the rigid pass requirements for blacks traversing the countryside. That leads to what we have today. This proportionate search of vehicles driven by black people, despite all reports showing this is ineffective. They don't care about that. It has nothing to do with catching a criminal. It has everything to do we're making sure we know our place. Slave patrols broke up large gatherings and assemblies. Police deliberately campaigned to discourage youth protests. Not only do they deliberately campaign, but look at the difference when whites protest or even commit terrorist acts like they did in, on January on the January 6th insurrection. Where were the, the, the riot shields during that day? Where was the military gear that police wear whenever there's a peaceful protest by black people? The slave patrols visited and searched slave quarters randomly. That leads to what? 
in modern police, search and frisk policies and procedures in almost all major urban cities. The slave patrols inflicted impromptu punishment. Then they catch a slave and whoop his ass on check. And what do we have in modern policing? Extrajudicial killings of black men and women. The race soldiers are not supposed to be judge and jury. They're supposed to uh, detain and arrest when someone commits a crime or is suspected of committing a crime. And as you know, as a black person, you don't have to commit a crime to be abused by the race soldiers. As occasion arose, of course the slave patrols suppress any insurrections or fight for freedom by the slaves. And what we have here in 2015, military style use of force versus peaceful protesters. Everywhere there's been protests in the last few years, Ferguson, Baltimore, Oakland, Cleveland, Chicago, Philadelphia, and beyond. History repeats itself. You know, the same damn people. It's the same damn... You see pictures of these people at these lynchings and what have you. Those people had children. And they raised their children to believe the same crap that they believe. That we don't deserve life and liberty. And yes, we're part of the problem because too many of us are looking for a comfortable niche within the system of white supremacy. And even those that aren't looking for a comfortable niche are seeking acceptance. Well, who the hell are they to be accepted by? Remember I told you the Moors had to re-educate the Europeans. They were pissing in the street, defecating in the street and walking right through it, living in their home. They, didn't, they did not believe in taking baths. And then we had these celebrities come out, these European celebrities, come out and freely admit that they don't bathe regularly. So who the hell, as Malcolm would say, who the hell are they to be equal to? Are you kidding me? Get out of here. Must be out your damn mind, on Patrice Gears. This is the open eye. Uh, wait a minute, y'all. I ain't WHGE 95.3 FM. I'm Patrice Gibbs, your third eye optometrist. Yeah. You already closed them out, y'all. Listen. Pay attention. There's, there's levels to this. Many of our people are not ready for the responsibility of revolution and nationhood. That's so unfortunate. One of our biggest problems is we have been robbed of our knowledge of managing a state. And as history shows, the African was very good at managing a state. From ancient Nubia through Kemet to medieval Benin to Songhai, Mali, and Ghana. Just to name a few. I could sit here for hours and list 
the great states that the African has managed and ruled. The African was very good at managing the state indeed. Somehow, the African in America retained this knowledge for quite some time, even in the face of brutal bondage. The irrefutable evidence of the amazing resiliency of the African are the hundreds of well-run black communities that sprung up all over America as soon as the physical chains of bondage were removed. And we know the names of those places. Rosewood, Tulsa, Wilmington, North Carolina. Of course, the history of America is not wanted to be about what happened. The history of America does not want you to know the fact that most of these thriving black communities were destroyed by white supremacy, including white citizens and American government. Don't get it confused about the KKK. The KKK was just a stupid strong arm of white supremacy. We weren't just robbed of our knowledge to manage the state. We were massacred for doing so. Remember, when the African ruled the world, it was a much better place to live. And as I always tell you, destiny determines who enters your life, but you decide who stays. Therefore, value those who value you. And don't treat those as a priority who treat you as an option. Thanks for joining us. I'm Patrice Gibbs, the third high optometrist on WHGE 95.3 FM. All right, all right. Hope you enjoyed the show. Hope I got something said. Hope you learned something. Join us next week. Oh, I will be posting this uh, on YouTube later. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Keep us moving. All right. Peace.